The gladiators enter the arena, the field of praise. Saturday's weather perfect for an historic Scouse occasion. This season, over two million people on Merseyside have watched Liverpool or their neighbours Everton, last year's champions. But they don't behave like any other football crowd, especially not at one end of Anfield ground, on the cop. The music the crowd sings is the music that Liverpool has sent echoing around the world. It used to be thought that Welsh international rugby crowds were the most musical and passionate in the world, but I've never seen anything like this Liverpool crowd. On the field here, the gay and inventive ferocity they show is quite stunning. The Duke of Wellington, before the Battle of Waterloo, said of his own troops, I don't know what they do to the enemy, but by God, they frighten me. And I'm sure some of the players here in this match this afternoon must be feeling the same way. An anthropologist studying this cop crowd would be introduced into as rich and mystifying a popular culture as in any South Sea island. Their rhythmic swaying is an elaborate and organized ritual. The 28,000 people on the cop itself begin singing together. They seem to know intuitively when to begin. Throughout the match, they invent new words, usually within the framework of old Liverpool songs, to express adulatory, cruel, or bawdy comments about the players or the police. But even then, they begin singing these new words with one immediate huge voice. They seem, mysteriously, to be in touch with one another, with Wacker, the spirit of Scouts. The spirit is good-humoured and generous when they're winning, but not necessarily when they're losing. On Saturday, they were certainly winning. In an hour, Liverpool scored five goals and could have scored more. Their poor, sacrificial victims were Arsenal, Southerners. On Merseyside, football is the consuming passion. It's hard to persuade people to talk about anything else, except perhaps the beat groups, which the cop crowd do a lot to explain. Why should it be? Does it spring from religious rivalry and feeling? Is it a 30s hangover? The night before the match, we discussed this at one of Liverpool's innumerable pubs. I think they're all fanatics, fanatically crazy about football. Personally, I think they're mad. Why do you think there's such enthusiasm for football in Liverpool? There's nothing else to do. How do you mean there's less to do? Well, for some folk it is, but for the older fellas it isn't. Say, the older fellas want to get out and watch football. They can't go to bingo, so they go to football. It's said that the division between the clubs, Everton and Liverpool, is a religious division. Is that true? They used to say, oh, you're a rat catcher, or you something what's else. A rat, what's a rat catcher? Well, an, an, a rat catcher is an RC, and they used to call you something else at one time, but that has faded away now. It's all gone. It is said that the Liverpool supporters cause trouble on excursion trains. What do you have to say about that? Well, what do I think of this? And I must tell you this without fear of contradiction. There are no hooligism between Liverpool fans or Everton fans. Regarding bulbs, if four boys and four girls go away and they follow Liverpool and they follow Everton, their team's won, they have a couple of drinks, they take a ball right out, they want to have a little bit of a canoodle. I made up about that. That is life. Well, I see. Well, what, what about these accusations that uh, train doors are torn off? Well, these accusations regarding train doors, I must say this, that half of these Liverpool fans and Everton fans get blamed for quite a lot of things. And if a chap is in the course of his journey and he is nowhere near the toilet, they open the door, they have a jimmy riddle, and when it goes through the tunnel, the door comes off when it gets into Lime Street, the train seats are ripped, the porters do the train seats, not the Liverpool and Everton fans. How are people treating the coaches? Well, the coaches are quite all right because they can pull up at the nearest police station and have any people <laughs> that interferes with the coaches whipped inside. In other cities, there seem to be uh, pressures which make people less interested in football, like uh, husbands going shopping or wives insisting on going out in the car in the afternoon. Doesn't that happen here? 
I don't think so. Not in Liverpool, no. I, I think that um, if there's any reason at all, Liverpool is probably a masculine city. And I think that the people who go to these games on Saturdays, they're very manly themselves. Um, Liverpool itself, the cop is a shrine. People go up there. I'm sure that they worship themselves in the crowd as they do the team. Do you think there's anything at all in the idea that it's the relative poverty of Liverpool and Merseyside that gives it its football fanaticism? No, I don't think so. I think in the last two or three years, the uh, prominence of Liverpool in various fields, you know, the Beatles and so on, has had uh, quite a bearing on this. I mean, I've noticed, for example, in the last, last season that um, a lot of people go along early to the, to the ground, to Anfield, um, to enjoy themselves and sing Beatles numbers and so on. And I, think, I think that um, the, the idea of, of glamour has got something to do with the, the crowd following of Liverpool. Do you follow the football? Yes. yes. What is it you like about it? Uh, well, it's more or less the anxiety, you know, and the excitement about the football. Well, it gives you a thrill, you know, when you go. All the supporters are shouting and cheering, you know, and if they get a goal, <laughs> well, <laughs> you made up then. In lots of cities nowadays, men don't go to football matches because their wives like to have them go shopping with them or take them out to drive in the car. Are you married? No. Well, if you were married, would you want your husband to take you out on Saturday afternoon? No, no. Why not? Well, um, well, if he's interested in football, which I suppose he would be, you know. I mean, um, no man wants to go shopping with a woman on a Saturday afternoon no. when there's a football match on, you know. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would. Well, in this city, if um, a man goes to shopping in town with a, a, his wife, like, well, they don't look at him as though he's a sissy. We are all scousers and they're proud of the Liverpool team. I think that's why, you know, we're so excited about Liverpool and this football. If they were at the bottom of the league, would you feel the same? Oh, no. <laughs> no, because, um, well, you feel they've let you down, you know. Liverpool children, they say, are taught to walk by taking them to football matches. Would you like to play for Liverpool? Yeah! yeah. Uh, all right, that'd be a why would you like to play for them? The money and the thing of going abroad and around the country. Cause be famous. Just for the honour. Do you think you frighten the, uh, the teams who come and play here? Yeah, yes, yes, certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 no good, It's definitely Arsenal. worth the gold star as soon as they come out. Yeah. Why, why do you think it is that you boys here in Liverpool give so much more noisy support to your team than any other people? Got big mouths. If you don't play for Liverpool, what will you do? Go on, go the if it's the dole or work that's humdrum, there are always the heroes to acclaim almost in Roman style. St John, the centre forward. Yates, the centre half. Thompson, the outside left. The match ends as immaculately as any fantasy could devise. Liverpool are the champions. The triumph is total and the gladiators applaud the crowd. The team is now in the European Cup.